Death of the tax return, they said? Well, I'll let you decide. As a business accountant, my team and I spent all day long helping business owners on their journey. And one massive part of their journey that's gonna be coming for self-employed and landlords of you out there in 2024, for many of you, is something called making it tax digital for income tax. So over various parts of our content, whether on you know, social media channels or blogs or anywhere else, you might have heard me talking about making tax digital. Now this is a thing currently, if you're VAT registered, you'll know about how that works for VAT. But what I'm gonna talk about in this video is the income tax changes that are coming, and that's a big difference. That's a completely different system. And it, it goes back to 2015, the then chancellor said, we're abolishing a tax return. And everyone went, yeah, great. And they didn't say what they're replacing it with. And that's what I'm gonna be talking to you about in this video, because it's pretty difficult, I think. And as it has been dubbed in the accounting industry, making tax difficult for, for a reason, because there are gonna be some challenges. Don't get me wrong, there are some upsides as well, but there are some big changes coming. And if you're not ready for them, it's gonna be somewhat of a shock. So before we get into it, if you like these type of videos, make sure to click the subscribe button below so you get notified whenever we release more video just like this one. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is from April 2024, if in the previous tax year you had a combined income, so that's the money you had in, not profits, sort of your turnover, or if you're a landlord, it's going to be your gross rents. So, you know, not what you get after your managing agent takes the fee or anything like that, the gross rents. Add all that together. And then if it's over £10,000, you're gonna be in this new system, this making tax digital system. And you're gonna to have to report quarterly using digital returns. So what they've done is they've taken the once a year tax return and sort of replaced it, but sort of not as we talk about, but they basically said, look, from this year on, you're gonna to have to report every quarter. So, you know, uh, and they normally draw those quarters to the sort of the fifth of each month. So, you know, your tax year starts on the 6th of April. So they wanna kind of bring it to the fifth of each end of each quarter, but you can also just choose to do it calendar year. So, you know, you can pick the 30th of June, the 30th of September, and the 30th of December, and the 31st of March, if it's much easier. And I know, even us accountants, we might choose to use those, those ones as well because it's easy for people to picture, but you can do either, you know, you can do that. But that's what's gonna happen. Now you're gonna have to submit these, so keep records digitally and submit these digital returns. And so people think, oh, that's cool, I'll just log on revenue and customs, i do that anyway and submit. Well, I can tell you now, there is no plans currently to have any free kind of software. In fact, they're working with all these software developers now to get them to do it, the burden's on them. Uh, so you're gonna need to do something. You're gonna need to figure out how you're gonna transmit this data. And there's some real oddities and there's a lot of unknowns. So as I'm talking to you about this now in mid 2022, this has been something that's been in development since like 2015, but they kept just pushing it back. And a lot of accounting bodies and business groups keep shouting at the government saying, we don't see the benefit. Now they're saying that the benefit is that you're gonna be able to see your tax bill. And actually I've seen some of the test softwares, it does, it gives you a bit of an indication of what your tax bill might look like. The problem is from my point of view is it doesn't take into a multitude of factors that make that anywhere near realistic. Um, again, that could change, but as I'm looking at it now, as I've seen it at the trade shows, not sure it's that good. Now, that's great, and I'm a big fan of that. You'll know if you've seen any of our videos on the YouTube channel, we talk about you know ways to sort of save tax from a provision point of view, so you're not caught out when it comes to saving tax bills. And that is a struggle for self-employed people, so I totally get it. But obviously offset with the fact that you're now gonna have to find some software, learn how to use it, report digitally each quarter. And then on top of that, which we haven't said, so you report each quarter, you've then got to do an end of period statement to kind of do any final adjustments really to all of that and claim some allowances that wouldn't normally be claimable in the quarterly updates. And then on top of that, you've got to do a final declaration, which is effectively a tax return. It's the same boxes, the same, pretty much everything. I mean, in fact, looking at the notes that the developers have uh, put online and how they're working with software providers, all this stuff was effectively being deconstructed from a tax return and turned into a newish system. So it's the same sort of detail. So that's what you're gonna be submitting. So if you're submitting quarterly updates, you're really just submitting two boxes if you're under the VAT threshold. So that's, uh, if, if your income's under about 85,000 pound, you're likely just submitting income and expenditure that's it, and then at the end of the year, you're gonna do all your rest of your stuff. If you're over the VAT threshold, you're gonna be using the kind of 14-ish categories that are on a normal tax return that sort of expand out into different headings. And again, like your software's gonna be able to handle all this, but the point is, you're gonna to kind of have to do it. So you've got all that. Now, just to make it sound even worse, and this is the reality of it, let's say you've got two side hustles and a single property, and combined, they're over 10,000 pounds, so you're gonna to have to be in this system. What's then gonna happen is you're gonna to have to submit quarterly returns for both those side hustles. So let's say, I don't know, you're a full-time construction worker, a self-employed construction worker, and then you have a side hustle doing um, taxiing for Uber. You're gonna to have to do your Uber submissions and you're gonna to have to do your construction industry submissions. And then on top of that, you're gonna to have to submit your property 
uh, submissions as well. And if one of those was VAT registered for some reason, you might also have to do a VAT quarterly return, which might not also line up with the quarters. So it, it is going to be a lot of returns potentially. And again, I know accountancy and business groups are challenging this, but it doesn't look like there's anything happening other than, yeah, well, this is what the system's going to be. So I just kind of want to put it on your radar at this point, just to say, look, it is coming. You are going to have to bear this in mind. And you, you've noticed I've only talked about self-employed people and landlords because that's where it's starting. Limited companies doesn't come for a few years yet and actual partnerships as well don't come for another year. So in the minute, April 2024. Now, again, that seems like miles away, but we're in the 22 slash 23 tax year right now. So it's going to come around really, really quickly. Now, you other random questions that are out there at this time, people wondering, well, what happens when I start in mid-24? Do I have to immediately come into the system? Well, currently, under the draft legislation, knows the answer. They kind of want to see a tax return in at least one. I mean, actually, in some scenarios, you're looking at a couple, so it's almost year three you might end up in the system. But uh, once you've kind of proven, I suppose, that you're over £10,000, then you have to come into the system. I, I think the chances are you'll be able to do it voluntary if you want. I mean, you can now. There's a pilot active where some accountancies are, are signing up and being able to submit in the uh, simple scenarios and submit reports already. So I'd imagine it's going to be voluntary. But yeah, you wouldn't have to till later. But right now, as we're recording this, of course, if you're starting your business now, and you do make £10,000 combined from those sources before April 24, you're going to be in it. So it's very likely to affect people that listen to this video right now. But if you're listening to this video, I don't know, in two years time and you come across it, well, you might get lucky, but it depends. It's also changeable. We don't know everything. There's certain scenarios where we just don't know the answer yet, but it's coming out weekly and software providers are kind of working on it. So it's going to be more as it comes. But yeah, the, the, the takeaway from this is that these big changes are coming. And you might think, well, that's great. I'm just going to hand off to my accountant. They look after that for me anyway. And I would start talking to your accountant about what they're looking to do. It's so early. I think a lot of accountancies haven't even started looking at it yet. There are a lot of them that are aware of it, but we, it's very difficult as an accountancy business right now to plan exactly how to help clients because everything keeps changing in terms of what does the software look like? What do we actually need to do? You know, all these things are still coming out every week as I'm recording this. This is quite an early video really on, on the practicals. But undoubtedly, accountants are going to be able to help you, or the majority of them will. You might have some that uh, take this moment to sort of retire, but the majority of them are going to help. But of course, there'll be different things. I think uh, for a lot of it, what will happen is there'll be different types of help. There might be a hybrid of help where you know you do maybe some of the quarterly ones, the accountant does the end of the year one for you, or it could be you outsource it all to them. I'm sure there's, there's loads of options, a bit like there is with the VAT. It's just this one is a big change because there'll be a lot of people that I don't have any records. You know, I use a stereotypical taxi driver, for example. We've uh, dealt with lots of those and still have them uh, over the years. And a lot of them like to bring in their minimal records at the end of the year, once a year, and that's that's what they do. That's going to be a massive shift for that type of business. So um, yeah, it's coming. And if I, if that's you and I'm talking to you and you're thinking, wow, yeah, I literally do have a carrier bag and some written receipts, then this, this is going to be the biggest change for you, unfortunately. So do start talking out, reaching out to your accountant, finding out how they're going to help you. Or if you've not got an accountant, think about and research how you're going to do it and just keep an eye on the channel on our social media and there's going to be a ton more info so that's it for now not the best news but i think we're moving into a digital world and it doesn't look like we can do a lot about it so uh, watch on and we'll bring as much info as we can when it comes